Thank you for coming. As the chair of the Eric Scott Lynch Slavery Hist Heritage Panel, I would like to thank you all for coming along to witness this important day in Liverpool's history. This event and moment in time could not have taken place without the expressed permission from Eric himself and his family, whom he entrusted to represent him and work with us on his behalf. Over the last 16 months, with the support, cooperation and commitment of the members of the panel, we are really excited to finally show the results of our work. The combined efforts of Liverpool City Council, National Museums Liverpool, Lawrence Westgaff and Liverpool Black History Research Group, Cumber Amani Millennium Centre and Anika Nugent have made this happen. This is the first of many Eric Scott Lynch Slavery Heritage Street plaques that you and members of the public will see as you walk around the streets of Liverpool. Our city over the last few years has seen many firsts for the black community and today we will witness our Mayor Joanne Anderson unveil this first plaque which will tell the truth of the man behind the street named after him. Joanne herself is a historic figure in that she was the first directly elected black female mayor of a major city in the UK. <laughs> Following the mayor, Kim Johnson, our first black MP, unfortunately sends her apologies following a positive COVID test. But she has asked a member of her office, Nazra Elliott, to share her message with us. Today would have been Eric's 90th birthday. And I know that wherever he is, he will, he will be smiling on this special day in history when the importance of truth truly matters in a city that has been host to the longest continuous black community in the country. I thank you for your time and I now hand you over to our Mayor Joanne Anderson. Thank you Michelle. In 2020 Liverpool City Black Council agreed a motion to recognise Liverpool slavery's history which led to the creation of a panel and a task force. This group will develop the Eric Scott Lynch Slavery Heritage Plaques to be placed on 10 of Liverpool streets that are named after merchants involved in the transatlantic slave trade or those who have profited from slavery. In doing this, we pledge as a city to be open and transparent, transparent about Liverpool's role in the transatlantic slave trade and the plaques are an important step forward. This is a milestone moment for Liverpool in its reconciliation with its past. What we're doing here in Liverpool is truly historic. To create the factual narrative that's finally been put to the streets that are named after slave traders who built this city's economy. This understanding of our past is key and only when we fully, fully acknowledge and accept it can we move forward. Can't hear you. <laughs> The Eric Scott Lynch Slavery Heritage plaques, of course, also honour the late Eric Scott Lynch, an elder from our community who would have turned 90 years old today. Eric was a proud born and bred scouser who truly believed in the art of storytelling and has helped us all as black people in the city. He was self-educated in the history of Liverpool and wanted people to be embraced and celebrated as an essential part of our city's past and future. Eric would be really proud of this moment today. And I'm honoured in my role as Mayor. I can't take any credit for being involved in this way. My two predecessors, Jo Anderson and Wendy Simon, have been involved in agreeing to, to create the group and to um, get the plaques uh, up and running. Um, the city is very proud to be involved in this piece of work. And this unveiling takes place in the month of April, where we're going to host Liverpool's Anti-Racism Festival, 
a month long celebration from cultural organisations to promote understanding around discrimination and racism. So I'm very pleased that we're doing this together um, with, the, um, with Eric's um, unveiling of the plaque. We want to put a spotlight on the city and whilst we do some things quite badly we also do some things quite well so i'm very proud of what we're doing here today and what we're doing this month i know that much work has gone into this from the people involved as you see standing in front of you now and the nika doing the fantastic artwork that is wonderful but i'd like to particularly thank lawrence and michelle in um, second up and working hard on the group liverpool council staff karen you've done lots of work and um, the planning department who have been told has been great on this um, and also national museums everyone involved has uh, put a lot of effort into making sure we can tell the truth about liverpool's history thank you internationalist and honorary Ghanaian chief who we celebrate and remember. He was also a family man, a man that loved his community, a man we can all learn from and be very proud of, a great man from our great city. Eric's determination to tell the hidden history of Liverpool's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade was brave and admirable at a time when such information would have been unwelcomed and controversial. Eric's world-renowned tours created over 30 years ago expanded and contextualised Liverpool's development from a small fishing village into a thriving boom town, then city admired globally through the enslavement of Africans which Eric's own descendants were victims of. This is a fitting tribute to Eric's dedication to educate the people of Liverpool and beyond about the true history of our city and to acknowledge and understand their historic inheritance which also reveals the contribution made by Liverpool's black community. His independent, meticulous research will continue to educate for many generations to come and Eric is rightly acknowledged and commemorated today for all his work a great legacy with thousands of people able to recount fascinating facts that he generously shared. Thanking all those involved and I look forward to seeing each plaque from his important initiatives. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Andrew Lynch, proud son of Eric Scott Lynch. Um, I talked a lot to my dad about these plaques um, in, the, in the previous year. He was very proud that these plaques are being put in place. He saw, he saw it as a vindication <coughs> of the years of work that he put in to educating the people of Liverpool about their history and particularly about the connections with sl the slave trade. My dad, if anybody knows him or anybody knew him, would know him first and foremost as an activist, 
a person who disrupts, a person who wants to see change, a person who wants to see things get better. My, my father was a historian, but he was a historian with a purpose. That purpose grew out of his own life experience, born in 1932. At a very young age, his first memory of racism was when he was about three or four on a day out to New Brighton. Lovely sunny, sunny afternoon in the summer, goes on the beach, swimming costume, sitting around playing in the sand. Then suddenly, his mother was approached by a police officer. That police officer said to his mother, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave the beach. Why? Turned around and across the promenade at New Brighton were thousands of people all pointing and talking about him and his family saying look at the ends, the n-word, using the n-word, look at them <laughs> things were going to get out of hand so the police escorted them off the beach they ended up pinned against the shop wall people were throwing money at them saying dance, dance for us this is a young child, a young mother, alone being treated not as a human being but being treated as a mythical beast, like a goblin or a pixie or something like that. Anyway, they were escorted to the, the, the uh, train station and got the train home. That was just one of the experiences that my dad had growing up. He was also unfortunate enough to live through the 60s and 70s when he saw his sons and his daughter being physically abused and attacked on the streets of Liverpool for looking differently, for being, for being black. He himself, many a times, was asked, where are you from? Obviously a Scouser, Scouser accent, clear. Where are you from? I'm from Liverpool, where we, no, where were you born? I'm born in Liverpool. No, no, I don't mean that. I'm, where, where are your parents from? Liverpool. No, I don't, I don't mean... Where are you from? Not satisfied until they find out you, there's some connection with another country. And then they can put you in a box as a foreigner. We've all seen that. We've all had that as, as black British people. It's not good enough. That was the kind of thing that my dad stood up against. And that was the kind of thing that my dad wanted to actually correct in telling the story of our connection as black people with this city and our contribution as black people to this city. This plaque, the first of many, is that vindication of my dad's work. He didn't do it alone, so there's thanks to City Council, to NML and to many individuals who are involved in putting this together. I thank the city, I thank everybody involved in this. But this is not the end. It's not even the beginning of the end. <laughs> but it is the end of the beginning. <laughs> We're going to have many more. Thank you. Onwards and upwards. Thank you everyone, thank you all for coming out. Uh, I just want to quickly thank uh, everybody who's involved in this. You know who you all are, the organisations and individuals. I also want to thank someone who isn't here today, who personally I feel that this wouldn't have happened without him, that's Councillor Anne O'Byrne. When I first asked the council about doing this, the f I went to one of the councils you're familiar with and didn't get any, any response, sadly. I got in touch with Anne. Within a week, Anne and I were meeting and we were talking about uh, drafting the motion. Anne isn't here today, but I really want everyone to know and understand how important Anne's role was to getting these plaques uh, uh, in, in position. I'm really sad that she isn't here, actually. 
So I just want to thank here, I want you all to remember the very important contributions to really highlighting Liverpool's history that Eric uh, gave us all. He was a great inspiration to me as a young man and I really do like to think that I am following in the tradition of Eric. You know, his, his work out on the streets and his activism, he was an academic activist, that's what I call him. He was someone who used his history and research to help to make change and that's what, something that I think we should all try to do. You know, everything that we do in our community is off the back of knowledge and understanding of how important Liverpool's role was in slavery and the slave trade. And black people have played a very important role in the development of this city for more than 300 years. So you've got to understand when we talk about, you know, there's been a black community here for longer than anywhere else in the country. We're talking about a city that when we have the first records of a black presence, there was less than 10,000 people here. So I use that to say, that, you know, if it, Liverpool is a city of immigrants, and black people have been a, played an important role in the development of the city since since that time. Then what does a Scouser look like actually? We're all from elsewhere. This is a migrant city. Black people are just as much a part of the fabric and the tapestry of this city as people from any other part of the world. Yet that isn't something that's really been acknowledged. Eric really did highlight that history and let people know and understand that. And he was very proud to tell people that he was born here in Liverpool, as Andrew just said. But anyway, I'd just like to thank everyone. Thank you all for coming out and let's see more of these plaques going up across the city. Okay, well in. Well in. Well thank you everyone for coming out today. Um, like he said, onwards and on, upwards and onwards. We're going to be meeting again to look at the next nine streets. And if I'm correct, and Lawrence will definitely tell me if I'm not, it's going to be the first 10 that the City Council have committed to, but there is apparently 150 streets in our city named after merchants or people who benefited from the slave economy. So I'm sure that I'm not going to see the 150th, but I'm sure as hell going to continue with the next nine. So thank you very much.